me being productive in my kitchen. Um, this is for those who are just tuning in outside of the live hours. So yeah, body doubling is a thing where basically you just are productive with somebody else who's in the room also being productive. Could be doing a completely different thing. You could be doing homework. You could be getting ready for your day. Um, whatever. I just find that like, you know, how when you're on the phone, um, if you still do talk on the phone, uh, you just find it easier to do stuff like cleaning the house and laundry. This is kind of like that. And also, you know, I'm also here to answer questions about food or anything like that. But otherwise, we're just spending the morning together. So um, for those that are joining in, thank you for joining in. And uh, we'll see. Hold on. Did I put this public? Damn it. I did. There we go. Sometimes I forget to make this live a public one and I have to start all over again. Hey everybody, how's it going? We good? <laughs> How are we doing everybody? See you rolling in in the morning, as usual. There we go. Hello from Israel. Woke up again for leg day to get today. Hell yes, leg day. We do love it. Leg day is one of my favorites. I don't know why people hate it so much. I know it kind of hurts, but it's like, it's like the most bang for your buck. Oh, there we go. Hello, hi. It's your short that got me putting on alarms at five o'clock in the morning. Oh God, I'm so sorry. <laughs> 5 a.m. is something that you work toward. I hope you uh, kind of eased yourself into it. Normally, I'd, what time is it right now? It's 6.14. Normally I'd still be walking the dogs, but they had such a tiring day at daycare yesterday that they haven't even like, they could barely get out of the bed to go to the bathroom, so figured they don't need to be walked today. And I might bring one on my run today too, so she'll be extra tired. What are we cooking? We're just cleaning right now. But I could, I can show you the tanuji that I made with you guys last time I was live. It's it turned out really good. Um, it was so good in fact that I decided to film a video. A recipe video on it so that will come on pretty soon there we go I washed this before damn it what's up happy belated thank you so much my arms look jacked thank you so much <laughs> Bye, nice kitchen, thanks. <laughs> Hello, hi. Waiting for the ads to end. Wait, what ads? There are ads on this? They play ads on live? Live streams? Wait, that's wild, wait. Where do you see ads? I'm so curious. Cause like, I don't see that. I also have like, I also have YouTube premium, which is probably the best subscription service. I can like, I, I will admit like, yes, obviously I stand to, to gain something from people who like watch, I don't know, get YouTube premium in like a small way being a YouTuber, but like, 
I'm on YouTube so much, for better, for worse. Um, and there is not a single time that I'm like grateful for like not, or having like the ad free experience on YouTube. Whereas like every now, I'll, I'll, I'll turn on and turn off my Netflix subscript, uh, subscription based on whether or not I'm into a show. Like I'll turn it back on when Sandman's back on, but I don't think I could go without YouTube premium after starting it. And it's expensive too, but still, I think it's like a really good value. Or at least the ad-free experience is a good value. I don't know if you agree. What's for breakfast? I don't know. Um, I have, I'm still cleaning. Once I'm cleaned, first thing I should start off with is some coffee though. Let's do coffee. I just cleaned my mug. Um, here. Okay. I just cleaned my mug so we can just like uh, get a little coffee started. Are those ads on shorts or a different color? Yeah, that's the thing. Um, I had YouTube premium when I started shorts too, so I've never seen ads on shorts before. It's kind of cool that you don't get ads on shorts if you have like YouTube uh, premium though. An Americano sounds pretty good. I think we'll do that. Not dad. Call me a... <laughs> oh no. Uh, they better pay you because I <laughs> threw that shit. <laughs> I hope it was a good ad. You know, uh, wait, who? Who released a bunch of ads that I found were really interesting uh, lately? Hennessy. Have you seen like the ads for Hennessy lately? I don't know if y'all y'all are old enough to drink or do drink, but I do like clever commercials. And the ones from by Hennessy right now are very, very, they're just stylish and cool. Uh, the ads are shorts themselves, so you can just swipe. Oh, that's good. That's good. I've never been on a shorts ads campaign. I hope to, because those make quite a lot of money, but I've been on a few like national, uh, oh, what's it called? Uh, TikTok. I've been on a few national TikTok campaigns though. These curry leaves? What is this? I think so. I don't know why these are out like that. What's this? Cinnamon. Cinnamon. We need to get more cinnamon. I should just bring the jar down so I don't have to bring the container up. Just, uh, we're working very slowly today. Oh God. Cinnamon, cinnamon, cinnamon. Where are you? There you are. Not good cinnamon, but, um, Mustard seeds are always fun to have around the kitchen for whatever they last quite a while too. Ugh. I don't drink so I never see alcohol ads. Huh? Recently quit my job as a chef de partie at a Thai restaurant. Massive respect for chefs. Body pain over time. Ooh, yeah, you're damn straight. You're damn right about that. Um, it is rough on the body. I'm still recovering from it, I feel like. 
all the time. Where are the puppies? The puppies are in bed. They are useless right now because they were in daycare yesterday. And daycare just tires them out so much that, um, <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, just, they're just unconscious. Um, second, no. we, can, we can drive them out. What do we got? We got, oh, that's right. Are they in here? Did I take them out? Where the hell are they? Did I bring them out? I. There they are. All right. Morning! Good morning. What are you guys doing? Oh, they're the babies. People are asking about you. Oh, yes, hi. Good morning. Good morning, Mochi. Good morning, Boba. What I got here? The hot dogs. I'll be Franks. Yes. Hello. Neither of you pooped outside today, so are we really deserving? I mean, did you earn it? I think you earned it. Okay, there you go. There we go. Oh, the burgers. Sit pretty. Oh, good girl. Boba, sit pretty. Okay, she's, she tries her best. Uh, speak. Oh, yes, okay. Boba, speak. Woof, that's right. That's right. All right, down. Good girls, look at you. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness, we're full of hot dogs. So Costco, I'll be Franks, make for extremely good dog treats. They love them very much and you can order a lot of them. You can freeze them for long-term storage. They're great. <laughs> Hello from Hong Kong. Oh, hello. Uh, books, book at a bookstore in Hong Kong. That's amazing. I'm so happy. That makes me so happy. Especially like, the funny thing is a lot of the recipes in the book are, oops. Hold on. It just totally fell over there. The recipes in the book are, uh, are some of them are so Hong Kong based that I'm sure people there is like, why? <laughs> Why did this need publishing? Doesn't everyone know how to make this already? But obviously, this is for, it's for an American audience and a third culture American audience. So, um, did you uh, did you see Griffin Barrows Thirsting reply to your Twitter post? I have not. <laughs> um, no, I have not. <laughs> I don't. Kind of cool though. Uh, I had my pint of coffee this morning. Pint. Oh man, that's that's a lot. That's like a that's um that's a beer. I, I just think of pints as like beer glasses. So I just think of like a beer glass of coffee. Just that's so much. I have a cut on my bottom of on my lip here. I keep, I have a problem where I bite my lip a lot while I eat and chew. Probably why I try not, I don't chew my food as much as I should because I bite my lip a lot. And uh, it hurts the coffee. Happy belated birthday, fairly new follower. I just want to say thank you. Oh man, this is, this is actually really nice, Samuel. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I hope you have a wonderful day. Do you have any vegan ta vegan taco recipes? I have not yet. 
Um, I'll work on it. I'll work on it because I love sneaking vegan food into like people's lives. Did I work at high-end restaurants like Starred? No, I worked for people that like were high up on Starred restaurants. Um, and I certainly have been offered to stage at Starred, at like Starred restaurants before. Actually, was Kanji Corner Starred in Macau? I'm not sure. It might have been. But I worked at a lot of like fine dining restaurants here in Detroit, so. Atalangi, I, that's a great cookbook. I first saw you materials. I was certain you were vegan. Unfortunately, no, or I mean, I don't really feel one way or another, but I'm not personally a vegan. I am definitely an omnivore, but I cook a lot of vegan food because it is good for you. It is delicious. And I'm like trying to steer people to eat more vegetables, not for anything other than the fact that vegetables are good and good for you. So what made me want to be in the kitchen? I've just always gravitated towards it. Um, let me go get my pickles out because I want to make this now. I like. Ooh, smoked cauliflower tacos. That sounds brilliant. Uh, I mean, okay, here we go. Just put you here for now. Uh, excuse me. Here is the tanmoji we made last live. And the brine and pickling liquid is so good that I'm going to reuse it for mustard seeds and add mustard seeds to this. Look how golden yellow these are. Smells a little farty as pickled radishes tend to be. Mmm. Mmm. Hell yeah. So they're like, Tanmuji is sweet and sour vinegary. A little bit of a, a little salt in there, a little bit of just a tiny touch of garlic, but adding the Szechuan peppercorns to this gives it like a lemony flavor too, which is like, super nice and it kind of goes with the fact that they're so yellow they're yellow from turmeric but mm. Mm. oh i love it when things work out so well So if you want to know how to make this and you don't want to wait for me to, um, to do my short on it, because I'm going to do a YouTube short on how to make this, but just go to the last live and skip to when I'm starting to like work with a daikon radish and you can pretty much cook along with me. You'll need a daikon radish, preferably one that's been like sitting for a couple days. So it's like soft and squishy. Vegetable peeler, salt, sugar, Uh, rice wine vinegar, turmeric, some black pepper, and Szechuan peppercorns. And literally like 10 minutes. Throw it in a jar and that's what you get. But today we are going to Today we're gonna use this very same liquid. 
because I am lazy. And I also like to reuse. I also like to reuse stuff. So it's like healthy for you too. Like this stuff is really good for you. Like it's just a turmeric pickle. Mm. Actually, we'll start a new one. Because I don't want that citrus flavor in with the mustard seed. Alright. So for pickled mustard seed, we will need same one-to-one -one ratio. Do I have my vinegar over here? Damn it! I do not. I have to go downstairs. Yes, I have to go downstairs again. Okay. Is it here? Where are you? You who? There we go. So, for a lot of pickled mustard seeds, you have to like boil them first, but I don't find these ones to be particularly bitter. Oh, maybe a little bit. I'll blanch them. Any tips on how to navigate an open relationship? My partner doesn't want one, but I do. Well, that's the problem right there. Um, so, open relationships are things that you honestly, like it relies on trust and communication to work, um, especially, especially at first. I mean, once you get into a groove, nobody can tell you what to do to keep a successful partnership going. But if like one person wants one and one person does not want one, like that is it's kind of like a red flag in the relationship in general. I won't like sugarcoat it, code it. Cause that is like a fundamental disagreement on the foundation of the relationship itself. So you need to have that conversation about like, being honest of who you are as a person and what what you want out of your partner and vice versa like could they ever be a person that does an open relationship could you ever be a person that decides maybe that's not not for me after all um but to make sure that this relationship and i'm not calling it this but i'm saying to make sure that this relationship doesn't end up being kind of like a waste of any more time and effort you need to have that conversation and being like who are we who am i who am i to you um and make your decisions based off of what you find
Dan says, My late ex had an open relationship with me and he never would admit it, but I got STIs out of the blue. And, yeah. Discussing the level of protection that y'all are going to use is also part of that. Maybe when they're like highfalutin around, um, only for them to be like, you know, using protection with other people. And yeah, it's kind of like a responsibility thing too, where you just have to make sure that you're constantly getting checked, constantly being as safe as you can be. And also being honest with your partner, being like, oh, by the way, I hooked up with this person, um, was probably like, not the best situation, but yeah, let's go, let's go get a Z pack or whatever it's called, a uh, doxy prep situation or doxy pep, sorry. I'm allergic to condoms, even non-latex. Oh, well, guess I'll have to cut it off then. Love from Montreal. Does being single with no kids make me less attractive? I think that, I don't know. Does, is that like, isn't that like baseline? Most single people, well, no, not all obviously, but you know. What is my favorite knife? Um, I don't have a favorite. I've got like a knife that I need. I got a good knife to use it. I do have a favorite knife. I love this guy. He was like made for me, um, to like specifications and for my needs. So yeah, I do feel very attached to this guy. But otherwise, like I love these two. They're very light. I love the fact that I have like a dual wield set. And then as far as my Western, favorite Western knife, it's probably this one. We've been through a lot together. All right, we've got some boiling water now. So, to the boiling water, we shall add, this is how much pickled mustard seeds I'm going to use. I'm just gonna use the container to be the measure. So it's like one, of pickled mustard seeds, or of dried mustard seeds. I'm not gonna use that that much, so just, there we go. Just a very, very quick blanch here. Once it starts boiling again, you can pour them out. Cause you don't want them to cook in this. You just want them to get the, uh, as much of the bitterness as you can out of there. Cool it down. Now pickled mustard seeds, you can add to hot dogs, you can add to burgers. Um, steak is really good. Like eating like a nice steak or braised mushrooms. Anything you want like a little bit of like pickle flavor to them, but they kind of pop like caviar, ikura. Um, people call it, some people call it vegan caviar. And to those people I say, shut up. It's not what this is at all, but it is delicious. Now, as with any pickling, uh, as with any pickling liquid, it's pretty simple. It's just half vinegar, half water. There we go. And then we're gonna add in our spices, including the cinnamon we just got. Ah, oh, now I gotta go back into, oh, since this is out anyway, why not a teaspoon of turmeric as well? Because it is so healthy for you and it's so good for you, you just like wanna sneak it in to any 
in any way you can. So, there you go. Especially if it's like vinegary and strong tasting like this, you're barely gonna taste it. And actually turmeric, if you use it well, has a pretty good add, flavor add to uh, your stuff. What's in here? What else do we want to add to this? Cloves? Do we want warm? Do we want warm pickle? Yeah, we do. It's mustard seeds. We'll do cloves. Here, we'll do this. There's a couple of cloves in there. Cloves are actually flowers. Um, I didn't know. <laughs> I don't know. Why I decided to give you that fact, but there you go. Not coriander, because those are easy. Oh, fennel, hell yeah. So, so fennel, you can pickle fennel and it'll have the same, um, what's it called? It'll have like the same kind of fun eating texture as, I'll just use this as mustard seeds, and it's good for you. It's good for your stomach. It's good for, uh, well, digestion. And it adds sweetness without, it adds sweetness to things without adding sugar. So this will be a sugar-free pickle liquid, but having things like fennel and star anise in there will help, so. We're gonna do fennel, we're gonna do star anise. And anything else? Oh, we can't have turmeric in something without a little bit of black pepper, right? There we go. Um, I don't want to use Szechuan peppercorns in this, but we will have, let's see, about just a touch of powdered ginger to make this like a really warming pickle. That's more than a touch, but we're good. That's fine. We're fine. Everything's fine. Um, okay. Bam, that's our spice blend for our pickle. We might have to add a little bit more. I don't think well, I don't think we'll have to add more liquid. We should be fine with this. Well, pretty that is. That's not pretty at all, but it will be. Six pounds of garlic paste. Oh, what did I walk in on? Especially Mochi, have a good day. <laughs> Mochi's not here. Um, but Boba is. Oh shit, the sugar. Salt and sugar. Salt. And... I find that when you spice, you spice in, um, let's try speaking properly. Uh, I find that when you use a lot of spices and things that are vinegary, that you can use fake sugar, and it does not really affect, um, it doesn't affect, uh, I guess, the quality of the pickle itself. But we try to just keep sugar out of here as much as we can without compromise. 
Like if I'm making some cookies or some brownies, yes, we're gonna use real brown sugar. Um, but for stuff like this, like if you can get away with it, I'm more of the thing, I'm more of the uh, camp where it's like, if you can get away with it, do not use sugar. But if you cannot get away with it, don't feel bad for using sugar. Uh, so yeah, so it's it's not there is sugar. It's gonna be sweet if you have if you make a pickle You have to use sugar or just like um, Some kind of sweetener Just because it adds balance to the whole thing Otherwise the whole thing is just gonna be like sour and tart and you're not gonna be able to enjoy it But How are we doing? I'm gonna do just a little bit more because I like my shit sweet. Just like you. And sugar, well, and also you have to remember that like sweetness, sourness, like it is kind of like, it works through balance. So you might not be making something more sweet when you add sugar, but you might be making it less sour and more mild because sweetness counteracts sourness that is perfect. Let's use another one of these. That is so good. We're going to put in our mustard seeds now. They kind of look like fish eggs, huh? And this is like what you use to make mustard out of. Like yellow mustard is literally just like crushed this stuff. Like the yellow mustard you put on hot dogs and burgers. It's just this stuff crushed with some turmeric and vinegar and that's mustard Like that's where this stuff comes from If you are South Asian, I don't need to be telling you any of this You know all of this already and you know how amazing this is because South Asian cooking loves mustard mustard oil and all, all that good stuff Ooh, okay, and we will just let this simmer Sim, Simo, who got the keys to my big mouth? Um, oh, man. I just cleaned. I just cleaned. Now I've got to do it again. Are those mustard seeds pre-soaked? I blanched them for like a few seconds. Um, I don't know if these have been pre-processed. You can, you know it's authentic because they told you, um, but no, it doesn't say. But they're really mild. Like I ate one and they weren't very, they weren't very bitter. So I figured just a quick blanch um, to get any kind of residual bitterness out and then we'll just let it simmer on there for like 15 minutes. The mustard should like soak in all of that goodness and you can, um, uh, and then you can add it to whatever. Let's let's put some stuff away. I want to eat one more piece of tanmuji first, though. Hi from Korea. Oh, hi. We were making tanmuji. I'm I'm not Korean. I get that a lot, though. Actually, when I was in Hong Kong, um, I went. I studied. I was in Hong Kong for. Uh, you speak well in English, <laughs> not, not right now. But I used to go to school or high school in Hong Kong. I was there as a junior and a senior in high school. And it wouldn't be like weird that like I'd be walking down the streets in Hong Kong, just my fully Chinese self. And then Korean tourists would see me and like run up to me and um, ask me for directions in Korean because they just straight up thought I was Korean because I looked Korean. We got Korea in here. We got India. Great food. So much great food in this house. You know Tanmuji. I do. One of my best friends is Korean, so we go and eat Korean food all the time. Um, they live in. Oop, it's ready. Uh, not ready. It's just simmering. 
They live in K-Town, so... Mmm. Thank you, Quinn. Yes, you look very Korean. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. I think Koreans are amazing. I love how passionate they are. As a Frenchman, authentic French food is peak. I think that is so funny because um, I have eaten at a lot of like acclaimed new French restaurants lately and they serve so much Japanese food. <laughs> oh my gosh, what is this? The Undeclared Nation. Thank you for your content and all you've taught us. Thank you for all your love of Detroit, your dog and showing us your pretty dogs. Happy belated birthday. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> that was so nice. Oh, can I like this? I don't know if I can, but this is so cute and so kind. Um, uh, I'm kind of like a speechless. That is, <sighs> I mean, it's nice to be appreciated and it's nice to be, to have your stuff like resonate so again, thank you. Everyone else thanks you too, because obviously donations help the channel and the channel is free for everyone. So thanks. Um, what was I saying as a, uh, in regards to French food? Yeah, they were serving a lot of Japanese food in there. Like there was like lots of uni and sea urchin um, and lots of like salmon roe. Uh, you just a lot of Japanese ingredients in them, and I was just like, "Huh, the French are globalizing," but they would probably never, never admit it. I also think like I f I see fine dining and French cuisine the same way that I see like how New York is with pizza. Don't come for me, but I think. New York has sat on its status of having the best pizza in the United States and by extension the world um, for a little too long. So like, say what you will about like California wood-fired pizza, but that shit is fire. Like I love, I love me some, I love me some figs. I love me some fig, which is something that Anthony Bourdain totally made fun of. But like, I was like, I love figs and prosciutto and like some fresh cheese on my pizza. And like the Chicago style pizza, not the deep dish, that is garbage. But Chicago style thin, 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 like cracker crust pizza, that shit hits. Detroit style pizza, I'm, I'm biased, but I'm also right. Like just best, best kind of pizza. It's focaccia pizza. Like what the fuck is there to like hate about it? Um, but yeah, but then New York with your like, Thin floopy, your floopy laboratory retriever ear slice. Like, it, it's time to it's time to step up. And I feel the same way about French, French food. It's like, yeah, it is, you guys were pretty the best at one point in time, but it's like, not anymore. Don't cur, did I curse? Sorry, I swear a lot. Um, why did my mind go sh to charcuterie? Let's not get crazy, Detroit style. I, I, it is, okay, a good Detroit style, well-made Detroit style pizza has the perfect amount of everything because that crust do be crust in. Like it is, it is crust that has been cooked on a high-walled pan and that it was so greased up that it kind of fries the bread a little bit. And so it's super crunchy. And then the inside of the bread is super soft. And the top is just a straight amount of the best toppings. Like Detroit style is, Detroit style pizza is balance and enlightenment as a pizza. And I'm sorry if you disagree, 
because it sucks to be wrong, but it's true. Ever had German food? Yes, I love German food. I love me a um, liverwurst. What else have I had? Um, Eier liqueur. I'm gonna list off names of alcoholic beverages. Um, I don't know if the restaurant that I go to, I went to called uh, Super Gale was German, but I love a Dooner. There we go. What's the most underrated food cuisine in your opinion? Um, I think Ethiopian food and West African food does not get the respect that it deserves. That shit tastes joyful. Like that is delicious. Lots and lots of flavor, lots of heat, lots of spice, lots of like, it's the same kind of joy that you see in the food that you see in Korean food. I think it's like that happiness to eat and that fun with being able to like eat. Um, I think that's, that's, uh, that's, that's what West African and Ethiopian cuisine is like. I do think Nigerian jollof is better, <laughs> but we're not we're not gonna have a jollof fight on here. Um, Indian food, Indian food is actually like in my top three flavor favorites, but I just that wasn't on my list previously because I do not think it is underrated. I think a lot of people know just how delicious Indian food is, but it's also like so different. Like there are. How many provinces or states in India and each one has like a completely different cuisine it's also like a hard one to share because a lot of the best Indian food is like comes out of mama's kitchens let's start cleaning this up have dark mustard seed in here, but I don't have light mustard seed. We should change that. Anytime this song plays, I just like feel like I'm in a Miyazaki film. <laughs> oh, I guess I'm out of jars. East Indian household, there's a slight difference in masala recipes. Samosas are golden, they are. I love a papadam as well. Ooh, seven o'clock. All right, let's take a look and see how we're doing with this. So you can see the liquid has thickened a little bit because um, what happens is the mustard seeds will make it a little bit, it makes it a little bit slimy. I won't lie, it's kind of like an okra effect, but it also is what makes it kind of like a cool, almost like a ikura type texture. That's why people call this vegan caviar, which again, don't do that. It doesn't need to be compared to anything. It's just really good on its own. But it's kind of like a sweet pickle flavor with a, just a touch of mustard heat. Although I might add a little bit more pepper to this to give it even more heat. Maybe some chilies, oops. Mmm, 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 mmm. Oh man, that's good, mmm. Yes, it needs more black pepper, for sure. Any earthiness in this? Maybe. We'll put some cumin. Give this a bit of cumin. Mm. 
Maybe a garlic clove? No, that would make it too similar to the tanuji. Bay leaf. Bay leaf. Drusilla! Hey, you guys! Whoa! What are you doing? Got a bunch of messages to read now. Love world cuisine. They really do vegan well. Thanks for your creativity and unpretentiousness. Drusilla, thank you so much. Uh, you've been a, such a great supporter of the channel these past, like, for a long time, but then especially these past couple months, uh, it's been super helpful so again thank you everyone else in the channel thanks you uh you guys do so much to support support us i'm really so really grateful um and same with carlos oh uh, great questions um what do you know about dominican food or caribbean food in general not much except for the fact that it's delicious and i love me a curry goat but um i do know a little bit about the Chinese Caribbean food, where Chinese migrants were actually shipped to the Caribbean a long, long time ago as indentured servants, slaves. And with them developed a whole subset of Chinese Caribbean food that is kind of like, if you kind of picture like Chinese American food, but like spicy because they like to cook for the Caribbean palate, it's so good. So in my book, um, you don't have to use my book's recipe, obviously, because this is, it's, there are tons, there are tons and by tons, I mean like maybe three or four on the internet that are good of, uh, this particular dish. And I love sharing it and I love showing it off. It's actually like the picture is so good. And it was the cover of my, the UK version of my book. So let me hold on, find it for you real quick. Where is it? Oh, here we go. So this, one of my favorite photos, jerk chow mein. So it's jerk chicken or tofu or beef or pork or whatever, and then in some stir fried noodles. And out of that, I had the, uh, it inspired me to come up with this recipe. And this one is original to me. This is a curry goat lo mein. So we're using color curry goat and Jamaican curry to make a gravy, and then we're tossing it in there with uh, stir fried and wet noodles. So that's what I know about the cuisine. I hope that satisfies. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Let me catch up with the... Um, the chat here. I've got like, <laughs> I have um, mustard seeds stuck in my tooth. Hi from Atlanta, Georgia. My favorite Caribbean restaurant is owned and ran by a Jamaican Chinese family. The food is amazing. I am so jealous we don't have anything like that here in Detroit. And I get so annoyed <laughs> when people talk about how great Atlanta is. I have no problem, nothing against Atlanta. I just like, my biggest issue is like, we've lost a lot of our best Detroiters to Atlanta. <laughs> Some of my favorite artists, my favorite barber, <laughs> they all moved to Atlanta, which is fine, I guess. It is pretty much just like Detroit with better weather, but yeah, you guys have some cool shit over there and I would love to visit sometime. Could you please do a video trying Native American foods? Sure, I would love that. Um, I've only had fry bread, if I'm gonna be honest. And it was good. It was for a dinner, but, and a pop-up. But that was like, I don't have a lot of um, opportunities to have Native American food here. Sore throat remedy, honey. Okay, so it's a tablespoon of honey, hot water, lemon, and, kind of gross, a crushed clove of garlic. Um, yeah, but it works. It works really well. 
That recipe was taught to me by Ben Vereen. <laughs> if you don't know who that is, he played Will Smith's dad on The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. And um, he was over at my college for an artist in residence thing and he taught me that recipe and it like totally worked for a sore throat. Um, he was also one of, he also played the wizard in, in Wicked a couple times on Broadway. But what the happens is like the lemon and the honey help soothe the throat, but then the garlic coats your throat with the garlic essence, making sure like the bacteria and the viruses don't come back to like irritate your throat. That's like what it does. Um, and if you look at science and stuff, you'll know that garlic is really, 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 really good at helping you get over from being sick faster. So there's a reason for these things. It's not just because I want you to put disgusting things in your mouth. If you do, I would like you to film it though, because it's funny. My ex-mother-in-law was literally Native American Martha Stewart. Oh, that's cool. I'm glowing. That's good. Good lighting. Thank you. The honey will help as an antibiotic, not if you heat it, but not if you right. Uh, let's put this away. How we doing here? Hey, bay leaf actually. Cool. They'll look nice once we're in a jar. Glass jars are great at making ugly shit into like things that are pretty and giftable. But we'll put the spices back. The turmeric. Dried monk fruit cracked and simmered in water is also great for throat. Really? I've never tried that. I mean, I have this, but it's erythritol in it too, so. You can't have too much of it or you, you poop yourself, so. I wonder if this is like the same, if this is like the same stuff, just a different brand, I can put it in the same container. Make a video about me eating Indian food for 24 hours? Would I have to make it? Cause that's a, uh, that is labor intensive, but I'd be happy to. I don't know how to film that kind of stuff though. I'm working on being like, what's it called? I'm working on being more, having more fun vloggy stuff, but it's a style of YouTube video that I have not yet mastered. I'm learning, I'm watching a lot. Have you been to Philly? I have been to Philly, but I haven't been to Philly to eat, unfortunately. I was there for a convention, and that didn't give me a lot of room to go explore finding actual food. So I'm, I have to make it back. Although I have a friend who had a restaurant there called Poi Dog. I don't know if it's open anymore, but they were like early, early Hawaiian, Hawaiian food in Philadelphia. here, still being productive, yes. Cool, 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 cool. Ah, uh, three cis stew and traditional pumpkin stew. Nate, ooh. Okay. Give me something to write down before I have something to write down with. Three sister stew. Now, is this something that you'd like me to try making or just to try eating? Ever made Latin or Puerto Rican food or tried? I love Puerto Rican food. Uh, mofongo. Oh, I could get really big off some of off of mofongo. Uh, three sisters stew. 
And thank you again for the gift, Gamma. Traditional pumpkin stew. Three sister stew and pumpkin stew. Got it, got it, got it, got it. Three sister stew. It's a delicious combination of winter squash. You, I am already on board. Um, but, winter squash, corn, beans, tomatoes, peppers, and more. This is like, pretty much a stew of everything that we have to thank Native Americans for in our agricultural system, isn't it? Yes, it is. Hell yeah, I am into it. It's... Am I subscribed to New York Times Cooking? I did not know that. I should use this more. Um. Hi, hi, hello, hello. Have I tried Arabian food like shawarma? Of course. Uh, I live in um, I live in Detroit. Of course I've had shawarma. And like I've got tum and baba ganoush and dolma in my fridge right now at all times. Especially tum, my favorite thing to eat with fries, which is the, if you don't know what tum is, it is the whipped Lebanese garlic, sometimes call it Arabian garlic sauce. Delicious. Best thing ever. It's like super garlic mayo cream. Um, that's not even like a good way of describing it. It's like super garlic cloud lightning. It's so good. It For fries, just so good. Um, but anyways, Three Sisters Stew. Uh, found on many Thanksgiving tables. Uh, da, 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 da. Pork loin, cumin, kosher salt, black pepper, yellow onion, clo garlic cloves, turkey or chicken stock, yellow squash, pinto beans, black beans, chop. Hell yeah, I wanna, okay, so I'm going to, nope, that's not how you do it. How do I save this recipe? Save it, oh. Oh, don't deliver to my inbox. Okay, where is it? Okay, did I lose it? Three, three sisters stew. All right. Oh, there's a three sister squash. Let's do that. Okay. Now, what was the other one? And traditional, native traditional pumpkin food. Uh, pumpkin stew. Uh, native traditional pumpkin stew. Ooh. Oh, man. Look how pretty this is. Is this what you're talking about? I don't know if you're still in chat, but um, Native American cooking with this pumpkin stew situation, like, that is... A bread bowl could never, cause this actually looks like I would eat that. I love eating pumpkin, so. This is, you're already giving me fall time content. This is totally something that I would do. Native pumpkin stew. Let's see if I can find that here. No. So I will just have to remember that, oh God. Let me make a note here. Fall content. Native pumpkin stew. Three sisters. Stew. There we go. Thank you for the ideas. How old am I? I turned 40 last weekend. As the tamal is Aztec. Yes. And tamal and tamales are so good. I always have a freezer. I always have like a few bags of them in my freezer because I trade with my best friend's mom. Manuela gives, I'm the last, I'm the last of my bestie Alejandro. I'm the last of her friends to actually get tamales because she's like, I'm not working for the rest of these bitches, but John gives me stuff back. So I still get tamales. Ever made a video Panda Express copycat? I did orange chicken. 
I did orange chicken and I made, um, that's in my book too. It turned out so well that I put it in my book. Um, it was a recipe for orange chicken that was flavored with Fago, which is an orange soda that's based out of Detroit. But you can use Fanta or you could use that Mexican orange soda. That's really good in that too. I forgot what it's called. What are three things that are in my fridge no matter what? Um, condiments. I'm Chinese, so it's just jars of, like it's 90% just jars of stuff to put on rice. Uh, so like there's always going to be, uh, there's probably always a pickled something. There's always something that's pickled in my fridge. There's always, again, condiments. There's always chili, chili crunch and chili crisp. And there is always... I'm looking at my fridge, but without opening my fridge. I said pickles, I said condiments, and they're apples. There are always apples in there. If there are no apples in my fridge, I get a little distressed because I love snacking on apples. Have you ever tried Indian Faluda? I don't think so. I have not. This looks delicious. Oh my God. It's a cold dessert made with vermicelli. Look how pretty this is. Look at this. It looks kind of like hollow hollow. Mango faluda, rose faluda. Damn. I would like to try it. I would like to go there. I would like all of that. Are those basil seeds? You, you slut. This sounds delicious. This sounds delicious. <laughs> I love basil seeds. Yes, nice, try it. I will, I have to find a place. Where can I find Faluda in Metro Detroit? God, if it says Chicago, I'm gonna be so mad. Kofi Walla at Sterling Heights, one star. Oh wait, here we go. Pans, Bananas and Cafe. It's in Windsor, which is in Canada, um, but it is, but the funny thing is it's only, it's less than five miles away from here. Do I go to Canada for Faluda? I might, I might have to. Look at their signage, like, look at this restaurant. I, I might have to, I might have to go. Hell yeah, there we go, Faluda. We're gonna, maybe this is part of the Indian food all day thing. Um, so, what is this called? They're open 24 hours? What? That's not right. Who's still open 24 hours? In 2024, people need to sleep. All right, so we will, Royal Pan Windsor. That'll be a fun trip. We'll take the bus to Canada. Um, we'll take a bus to Canada and then we'll bike to this place and we'll spend a day over there. It's only $5 to go to Canada from here. How are we doing on this? We're done. What's your knives collection? My knife collection normally just, it consists of two kinds of sets. One is a Japanese and Western knife collection and then the one is a Chinese knife collection. So we're just going to this.
I definitely did not account for the expansion of this. <sighs> Forever not knowing what size container I need for the job. I always... Oh, I also should probably protect my wood surfaces, huh? I will never choose the appropriate size. Ramsey talking. I need to work on that. <laughs> Gordon Ramsey loves to put periods in the middle of his sentences. When he speaks. Wait, you pickled the daikon already? I did, the daikon was pickled last video. So here we have pickled mustard seeds. Always label. Always label and date your food. What's today's date? Uh, April. Um, wow, I have been 40 for four days. This can last for, I don't know. In your fridge, I would be surprised if this didn't last 30 days. But officially speaking, I'd have to say like a week. How does 40 feel? 40 feels like 30, except when you looked back, when you were 30, you were still a kid. When you look back at 40, you were already an adult. Cause like when I was 30, I would be like, oh my God, I was in my 20s. I was such a baby. I was so stupid and young and all of that stuff. And then I look back 
at 40 years old and I was 30 and I was like, ha, oh, wow, I was still stupid. I just knew better. I did it anyway. Good times. Ever tried to make a Taco Bell copycat? I have not because I feel like I would just rather make, try to make like Mexican food. Like real ones, uh, cause real Mexican food is good. Taco Bell's good too, but like it's not so good that I want to spend time making it. I'd rather just go buy it. Forty means absolutely no doubt adult. <laughs> yes, agreed. I wonder if the turmeric will also act like a little bit of a preservative. Stop like nasty things from growing in there. Make it last even longer. I'm not gonna take that chance. I will be finishing that before long, but. I turned 25 when I hit 40. Well, you know. What did you, what do you hope to learn at 40? Mm, I don't know. I mean, at 30, I was already like achieving what I thought was like my, my peak of DGAF-ism. Um, I'm surprised if I could like care even less at 40. I cared quite a bit at 30. At 40, I'm just like, I don't feel like I'm missing out on anything. I feel I've lived very, very fully in my 20s and my 30s to the point where I like don't feel like I'm missing out on anything, which means, which leads you to like not go out as much, just kind of chill, focus on things that are important to you, your job, your body, your house, your family, that kind of thing. Um, because I like, you know, nothing new happens after midnight, nothing good happens after 4 a.m. If new stuff still happens to you after midnight, then you have not finished living that life yet. But, um, if you start to notice that it's all of the same, then it's just trying to make a change. Name a car for an edit. How many people do this? Cause like, it's like every once a chat, people always ask me to name a car for an edit or once a, once a video, or is it like a, or is it like a trolling thing? I don't know. I'm here after 4 a.m. and this is good. I mean, damn, you, you totally hit me with like a time zone technicality. Ever made best burger for a vid? I've made a good video. I've made a good burger for a video. I made a smash burger for, I made smash burgers for Valentine's Day last year. It was really good. Burgers for Valentine's Day are highly recommended. Bye, <laughs> bye Amber. Have a good day. You like kimchi? I do like kimchi. But speaking of which, it is 7.30. So I should probably get ready to go <clears throat> to the gym. And this place still needs to be cleaned a little bit, but it's fine. Um, Y'all talking about tamales? I just hate go doing them by myself. It's not hard. Yes, it, it's not hard, but it's a, it's a lot of work, which can be hard. Um, I understand why some people only do it like once a year. Ever made spaghetti and meatballs for bid? I have. Uh, I have a spaghetti and meatballs video, a couple of them. I made Filipino spaghetti, I made a marinara meatball recipe, yeah. There we go. Okay, so I will talk to you guys later. Thank you so much, so, so much um, for everything. Again, if you're still here, Drusilla, thank you so much for your support. Thank you to all the people who supported this channel with donations and love and likes and all of that stuff. 
and I hope to see and chat with you guys all soon. Um, <laughs> talk to you guys later. You're amazing. You're all amazing. <laughs>